John Calvin on Psalm 84, verses 7 through 10. They go from strength to strength, every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Selah. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. They go from strength to strength. The saints are continually acquiring fresh strength from going up to Mount Zion and continue to prosecute their journey without weariness or fatigue until they reach the wished-for place and behold the countenance of God. No visible image of God was there to be seen. But the Ark of the Covenant was a symbol of His presence, and genuine worshippers found from experience that by this means they were greatly aided in approaching Him. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Unlike the greater part of mankind who desire to live without knowing why, wishing simply that their life may be prolonged, David here testifies not only that the end which he proposed to himself in living was to serve God, but that in addition to this, he set a high value on one day which he could spend in the divine service than upon a long time passed among the men of the world, from whose society true religion is banished. It being lawful for none but the priests to enter into the inner and innermost courts of the temple, David expressly declares that provided he were permitted to have a place at the porch, he would be contented with this humble station. The value which he set upon the sanctuary is presented in a very striking light by the comparison that he would rather prefer having a place at the very doors of the temple to his having full possession of the tents of wickedness, the plain import of which is that he would rather be cast into a common and unhonored place, provided he were among the people of God, than exalted to the highest rank of honor among unbelievers. A rare example of godliness indeed. Many are to be found who desire to occupy a place in the church, but such is the sway which ambition has over the minds of men that very few are content to continue among the number of the common and undistinguished class. Almost all are carried away with the frantic desire of rising to distinction, and can never think of being at ease until they have attained to some station of eminence.